living in a world awash with colors of emotion. It's easy to become entangled in the gales of our feelings. Our emotions are like the weather, ever changing and unpredictable. They shape our days, color our perceptions, and trigger reactions. Yet, amid this ever-changing weather, there lies a steady, unchanging force, our faith. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, for we walk by faith, not by sight. This powerful verse is a reminder from God that our journey is guided by faith, not by the transient nature of our emotions. And yet, how easily we drift from this divine guidance as the world pulls us into its tumult of emotional storms. Consider this, when doubts creep in, the shadows of fear cast long across our path, but it's faith that lights the way. When disappointment shrouds our vision, it's faith that helps us to see through to the promise of a new dawn. And when joy fills our hearts, it's faith that keeps us grounded in gratitude. Our emotions are the melody of our life, but faith is the constant, unwavering beat that keeps rhythm amidst the chaos. It's easy to get swept away by emotions, especially in relationships or daily interactions. One moment, a cloud of doubt hovers, in another, a gust of anger blows, and then a downpour of sadness follows. But faith, faith is the rock amidst this stormy sea, providing a safe harbor for our hearts. Take, for example, the decisions we make every day. I don't feel like going to work today, or I don't feel God's presence right now. These are fleeting emotions that attempt to veer us off the course, yet, when we anchor ourselves in faith, we are reminded of the bigger picture. Our purpose goes beyond the temporary tide of feelings. It's about a higher calling, about walking the path God has laid out for us with courage and trust. Our emotions are a part of us, yes, but they are not the captain of our ship. That role belongs to faith. This is the divine compass guiding us through the voyage of life. In relationships too, the whims of emotion may lead to misunderstandings, but faith in God and each other is the glue that mends, the bond that endures. It's the lens that helps us to see beyond the surface, beyond the fleeting, and into the heart of what truly matters. Life is a beautiful, complex melody with high notes of joy and low notes of challenge. Our emotions are the lyrics to the song, ever changing with each beat, but faith Faith is the chorus that resounds with truth, love, and the promise of God's unyielding presence. So, let's step in tune with faith and let it lead the dance through the melody of life, knowing that no matter the tune, God is orchestrating a masterpiece. In a world of fleeting emotions, may we choose to walk by faith, to live by faith, and to love by faith. Emotions, often triggered by the kaleidoscope of life's circumstances, flutter like leaves in the wind. They are the colors of our soul, fleeting and ever-changing. Yet in the divine narrative, we're called to transcend this ephemeral realm and anchor ourselves in the eternal in faith. Reflect upon Abraham's journey. The narrative isn't of a man swayed by the insecurities resonating within, but of a heart tuned to the melody of faith. When promised a lineage despite the barrenness that seemed to be his reality. He didn't succumb to the mocking laughter of doubt. Instead, his faith painted a picture of hope amidst the barren landscape, eventually witnessing the promise of a son. Similarly, Gideon's tale was not of might or valor, but of a humble spirit yielding to the divine rhythm. The echoing call to liberate Israel from the clutches of Midianites didn't find resonance in his perceived inadequacy, but in a faith that transcended the mocking giants of doubt. Even the narrative of Christ isn't of a deity disconnected from human emotions, but of divine love embodied in human flesh. His journey wasn't devoid of the human emotional spectrum, yet his steps resonated with the rhythm of faith, transcending the transient to manifest divine love. The tapestry of faith woven through these narratives invites us to a different dance, a dance with the divine amidst the arena of life. 
It's a rhythm that doesn't sync with the fleeting tunes of our emotions, but resonates with the eternal melody of divine promise. So, as the whirlwinds of emotions swirl around, may we tune our hearts to the divine melody, anchoring ourselves in a faith that navigates through the storms, reaching towards the promise that echoes through eternity. Each stride in faith is a step closer to the divine, a journey not swayed by the fleeting, but inspired by the eternal. The Apostle Paul, through divine revelation, bestowed upon us a profound truth in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, exhorting us to walk by faith, not by sight. The scripture is not merely a collection of words, but a potent weapon in the hands of believers. It's an invitation to lift our gaze above the seen to the unseen, to the eternal, to the promises of God that are yes and amen. Imagine if we were to live by our emotions solely, our life's journey would resemble a ship in a violent storm, tossed to and fro by the whims of the sea. But God, in His infinite wisdom, has granted us that shield of faith that can quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. Our faith, grounded in the infallible Word of God, provides an unshakable foundation that not even the fiercest emotional storm can shatter. As you journey through life, you may often find your emotions trying to usurp the throne of your heart, attempting to dictate your reality. They may whisper lies veiled as truth, endeavoring to eclipse the light of faith with the shadows of fear and doubt. However, God's clarion call to every believer is to dethrone these transient emotions and enthrone faith, which is grounded in His eternal Word. When we choose to walk by faith, aligning our hearts with God's truth, we transcend the temporary and step into a realm where every promise of God is within reach. This walk of faith may not always be lined with roses, but it's one marked with divine assurance and profound peace. And as you walk this path, you'll find that with each step, the fog of negative emotions will clear, and you'll behold vistas of hope, love, and unyielding joy that is found in a deep, unwavering trust in God. So, in every season of life, let your heart echo the timeless truth. We walk by faith, not by sight. And watch as God's peace guards your heart in Christ Jesus amidst every circumstance, come what may. Emotions as visceral as they are, often paint our reality with the shades of our own subjective experiences. They veil the divine reality that is unchanging and eternal. The scripture in Hebrews chapter 11 verse one elucidates, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. It's an invitation to look beyond the immediate realm of emotions and to trust in the unseen, the eternal promises of God. Furthermore, emotions may lead us to doubt our worth or God's love in moments of failure or despair. Yet Romans chapter eight, verses 38 through 39 affirmatively declares, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is a powerful reminder to anchor our identity and our journey in the unchanging love of God, not the turbulent sea of emotions. We might not always feel victorious. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 triumphantly proclaims, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Our emotions may waver, but the victory through faith is assured steadfast. As vessels of divine creation, we are endowed with a rich tapestry of emotions. They color our world, adding dimensions of joy, fear, love, and sometimes sorrow. However, when the tides of life become tempestuous, it's essential to anchor ourselves in the unyielding bedrock of faith. Our emotions may echo the circumstances around us, but our faith reflects the indomitable spirit bestowed upon us by the Almighty. Consider a tree standing tall against the ravaging storms. Its leaves, symbolic of our emotions, may quiver, rustle, and some may even take flight with the ferocious winds. However, it's the deep-rooted faith symbolized by the robust trunk and sprawling roots that stands unwavering, 
providing sanctuary to the weary traveler seeking refuge under its shade. The Lord, in His infinite wisdom, urges us to embrace a faith so profound that it shapes our emotional responses. The world may beckon us to react impulsively to the ebb and flow of life's circumstances, but a heart anchored in faith responds with a calm, assured demeanor, reflecting the tranquility and assurance that comes from placing trust in God's divine plan. It's not about negating emotions, but about mastering them through the lens of faith, thus aligning ourselves more closely with the divine essence within. Our Savior, Jesus Christ was not a stranger to the whirlpool of human emotions. He felt anger, sorrow, and grief. Yet he navigated through these tempests with the compass of faith. His life elucidates a journey where faith triumphs emotions, where divine love overpowers early despairs. Titus chapter 1 verse 2 states, In hope of eternal life which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. The veracity of God's promise is not a reflection of our emotional state, but a testimony to his unchanging nature. Our feelings are like waves, they ebb and flow, but God's promise is an unshakable rock. As children of God, as stated in Romans chapter 8, verse 16, the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. We are heirs to a legacy of faith, a faith that invites us to look beyond the visible, to tread upon the waters of uncertainty with a heart brimming with divine assurance. Our journey may be speckled with moments of emotional upheavals, but as we anchor our hearts in faith, we align ourselves with the divine narrative, a narrative that echoes the eternal truth of 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. For all the promises of God in Him are yea, and in Him amen, unto the glory of God by us. In a world that often urges us to follow the dictates of our hearts, it's a divine call to let faith lead. It's an invitation to let the ephemeral waves of emotions pass and to stand firm on the rock of faith, to let our lives be a living testimony to the world that when faith leads, hope and love prevail. We all face challenges and difficulties in our lives. Sometimes we feel like we are stuck in a hopeless situation and we wonder if God is listening to our prayers. Do you ever feel like this? You may even find yourself beginning to doubt His power, His love, or His plan for your life. And you may feel like everything He ever promised or said to you is never going to happen. Perhaps you think that God has forgotten you or that He doesn't care about your problems. But I want to tell you today that God is not deaf to your cries. He is not deaf to the cries of any of His children. Not a hair falls from your head without His knowledge. I hope you remember that. Matthew chapter 10, verses 29 through 31 says, Are not two little sparrows sold for a copper coin? And yet not one of them falls to the ground apart from your Father's will. But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered, for the Father is sovereign and has complete knowledge. So do not fear, you are more valuable than many sparrows. My friend, your heavenly Father is not indifferent to your pain, as the enemy may want you to think. God is not unaware of your needs. He is not distant from your struggles. He is not silent in your waiting. He is not absent in your trials. He is always there beside you, especially when you need Him the most, even if you do not realize it. The psalmist wrote in Psalm chapter 34, verse 18, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. God is always with us, always working for us, and always faithful to us. He hears every prayer we utter. He sees every tear we shed, and He knows every desire we have. He loves us with an everlasting love. He cares for us with a tender compassion, and He plans for us with a perfect wisdom. But sometimes we don't see His hand at work in our lives. We don't feel His presence in our hearts. We don't hear His voice in our ears. We don't understand His ways. This is when we need to trust Him more than ever. This is when faith should come alive. This is when we need to keep praying until something happens. This is not denying facts, but it is rather seeking God's Word and standing on its integrity. The Bible shows us that prayer is one of the most powerful keys to unlocking the power of God in our lives. 
Prayer is how we communicate and connect with God. It is how we express our faith in Him, the way we align our will with His will. Prayer is not a magic formula that guarantees instant results. Prayer is not a bargaining tool that obligates God to do what we want. Prayer is not even a ritual that earns us favor with God, as some people may think. Okay, if I pray long enough, God will like me and give me what I want. Prayer is a relationship that connects us to God. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 6, But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father, who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. Prayer is a conversation that bears our hearts before God and reveals God's hearts to us. Prayer is a surrender to His sovereignty over us. Do you know what you are doing when you pray? You are not telling God something He doesn't already know. You are not asking God for something He doesn't already want to give you. You are not even changing God's mind about something He has already decided. When you pray, here is what you are doing. You are opening yourself to God's presence, God's power, and God's purpose in your life. You are inviting Him to work in and through you according to His will. You are allowing Him to transform and conform you to His image. I remember telling someone to keep praying for me because I needed it, and her reply was, Well, you already have the Lord in and with you. Don't worry. I had to quickly correct her because I wasn't sure she grasped the full essence of prayer. Prayer is so important that when God became a man and lived on earth for 33 and a half years, He was always praying. He had power and wisdom and grace upon grace. Yet Jesus still depended on prayer. He even told His disciples one time, Pray so that you don't fall into temptation. I told my friend that the Apostle Paul wrote a great part of the New Testament and prayed more than most of the saints in his day and still requested for the saints to pray for him. Why? Because prayer is more than just telling God your needs or practicing a spiritual or religious ritual. Prayer is how you say, God, I need you and cannot do without you. Help me. I depend on you and want to keep depending on you. Each time you go to pray, for any length of time but with consistency, this is actually what you are saying to God. This is why God is always felt around those who pray often. This is why prayer can be hard to maintain. The flesh easily gets tired, and the devil, knowing prayer's power, doesn't want you interested in it. That is why prayer can be discouraging. Sometimes it can seem like it's not working. You may pray for a long time and see no change in your situation. You may pray for a specific outcome and receive a different answer. You may pray for a miracle and experience a disappointment. And you may start to wonder if God is listening at all. You may start to doubt if He really cares about you. You may even start to lose hope that anything will ever happen. But I want to encourage you today. Don't give up on prayer. Don't stop talking to God. Don't stop trusting in Him. The Bible says God's ways are higher than our ways, and His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 9. We may not understand why He does what He does, why He allows what He allows, or why He delays what He delays, but we can be sure that He has a good reason for everything He does or doesn't do in response to our prayers. He has perfect timing for everything He gives or withholds from us. He may be testing your faith, strengthening your character, teaching you patience, preparing you for a blessing, protecting you from harm, or accomplishing something greater than you can imagine. I could go on and on. We cannot know all the reasons why God may do anything. But listen, whatever His reason is, it is always for our good and to His glory. So don't let doubt rob you of your confidence in God. Don't let discouragement rob you of your joy in God. And don't let despair rob you of your hope. And when something happens, give Him all the glory, all the praise, and all the thanks. He deserves it. Amen. Now, praying effectively until a change comes is a personal and spiritual practice. And if you want to improve and connect more deeply with God, here are some helpful ways to build and maintain a consistent prayer life. Pray in tongues. If you have received the Holy Spirit and can speak in tongues, you can use this gift to pray more effectively. 
Praying in tongues allows you to communicate with God in a language that bypasses your natural understanding and expresses the deepest desires of your spirit. It is one of the best ways to pray according to God's will, because you are being helped by the Holy Spirit to pray both for yourself and for God's will in your life. Romans chapter 8, verse 26 says, In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. Praying in tongues helps you to pray according to God's will, while edifying yourself spiritually in the process. Be proactive in your prayer. Prayer is not a passive activity that you do when you have some spare time or when you face a problem. Prayer is meant to be an active and intentional way of engaging with God and seeking His presence, guidance, and power in your life. You can be proactive in your prayer by setting aside regular times and places for prayer, by praying with others, and by praying for specific needs and situations. Pray in faith. One of the most important aspects of praying effectively is having faith in God's ability and willingness to hear and answer your prayers. There really isn't any point praying while not believing that God can answer what you are asking. Jesus said in Mark chapter 11, verse 24, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. And the Bible confirms this in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, And without faith it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists, and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. Without faith, there really is no point for prayer. Faith is not just mental agreement with God's promises, but confident trust and expectation that He will do what He said He will do. In fact, faith also means accepting God's answer, whether you like it or not, and trusting that He knows what is best for you. Pray according to God's will. Another key factor in praying effectively is aligning your prayers with God's will. God's will is not a mystery that we have to guess, but a revealed truth that we can know and follow. God's will is expressed in His Word. It is expressed in His character, His attributes, in His commands, His moral law, in His purposes, His plans for history and salvation, and His guidance, His personal direction for our lives. You see, when we pray according to God's will, we are not trying to change His mind or manipulate His actions but we are agreeing with His heart and submitting to His authority. Hallelujah! And last on this list, pray with persistence and patience. Sometimes you may feel like your prayers are not being heard or answered by God, and you may be tempted to give up or doubt His goodness, but the Bible teaches us that we should pray with persistence and patience without losing hope. Persistence means that we keep on praying, we keep on asking, seeking, and knocking until we receive an answer from God. Patience means that you wait for God's timing and trust His wisdom in delaying or denying our requests. Persistence and patience show your faithfulness and devotion to God. Prayer is a relationship with God that grows deeper and richer as you spend more time with Him. The more you pray, the more you will know Him, love Him, trust Him, serve Him, and glorify Him. So, keep praying until something happens. Keep praying until you see His hand at work in your life. Keep praying until you feel His presence in your heart. Keep praying until you hear His voice in your ear. Keep praying until you understand His ways in your mind. Keep praying until you receive His answer in your situation. Keep praying until you witness His miracle in your circumstances. Keep praying until you fulfill His purpose for your life. God is faithful. God is able. God is good. He will never stop loving you nor stop blessing you. So keep praying. In the face of whatever you may face today, you have a choice to make. You can continue to do the things by your strength and keep failing. Or you can recognize that your life's battles as a child of God are not yours, but God's. 2 Chronicles 20.15 says, He said, Listen, King Jehoshaphat and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Do not be afraid of the battle before you. 
do not fret over how difficult it's been or how impossible it seems to overcome. When you let God fight your battle, you'll always be on the winning side. Are you aware that God has known what you'll encounter today, even before you were born? He's the Almighty, who knows the end to the beginning. That's why He's called the Alpha and the Omega. In Revelation 1, 8, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. When you put the words Alpha and Omega together, it means beginning and end. The word Alpha is the first letter of the Greek alphabet, while Omega is the last letter. This name Jesus Christ called himself in Revelation gives us an idea of God's identity as the omniscient God who knows the end to the beginning, with whom there is no past or future. However, it means far more than just he is the A to Z. This statement has more meaning. Christ as the Alpha and Omega is the first and last in so many ways. He's the author and finisher of our faith, signifying that he begins it and carries it through to completion. He is the totality and fulfillment of the law and God's promises. He's found in the first verse of Genesis and in the last verse of Revelation. He's the first and last, the all in all of salvation. From the justification before God to the final sanctification of his people. Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Only God incarnate could make such a statement. Only Jesus Christ is God incarnate. The Lord has been to your present before you. He is God, the author of time. He's never caught off guard by the trials you may go through. He's always at his post, every day, every time, ever ready to rise up on behalf of those who put their complete trust in him. 2 Chronicles 16.9 For the eyes of the Lord move to and fro throughout the earth, so that he may support those whose heart is completely his. You have acted foolishly in this. Therefore, from now on, you will have wars. So, you can get up, wipe the tears from your eyes, and know with certainty that your Heavenly Father will provide you with enough grace for whatever he allows to come your way. Often, the battles we deal with are battles we don't need to worry about. Some of us worry about the past and the future and ignore that the grace God gives us and his provisions are to fight today's battles, not to fight yesterday's battles or tomorrow's. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 34, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Many times you'll worry about things in the future and wonder why you don't have the resources to deal with them. The truth, according to the words of Jesus, is that tomorrow's troubles will be provided for tomorrow. It's not on the list of God's plans for our victory today. It's like giving birth to a child today, and instead of worrying and working towards making sure the child is well fed each morning and taken care of each passing day, the parents are worrying about paying for college, buying holiday clothes, and going on family vacations. Wouldn't that be foolish? and detrimental to the child. Those things may be important, but they're not needed right now. Those things will be needed for the child tomorrow, but the child must be provided for today. If something happens to the child today, what will be the use of the tomorrow you're worrying about? Hence, the Lord teaches us to trust and receive His grace for every battle in the present and keep the faith that the same God who showed up today will show up tomorrow too. To be a victorious believer, you need to respond by what God wants you to do, limiting yourself to only what He places before you. God knows how much grace you need, and He will provide it. You've been worried about winning and keeping a victory when you should be focused on receiving grace. God's mercy and grace are new every morning. One thing I love about God's grace is how fresh it is. We don't have to subsist on yesterday's leftovers adding a little more of this or that, hoping it'll be enough for what we face today. We don't have to beg, borrow, or steal someone else's grace because ours is depleted from the day before. As each day unfolds, we have a fresh supply of grace. Lamentations 3, 22-23 says, Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for His compassions never fail. They're new every morning. 
great is your faithfulness. As I look at these verses, I can picture the children of Israel in the wilderness. You see, in their need, they cried out to God, and He provided manna. The manna He provided each day was exactly what they needed. No one had less or more than they needed. He supplied everyone with the right amount. When they tried to stockpile it, it spoiled badly. The same thing is seen in the life of David, the king. David never lost any battle in his life, even before he became king. Do you know why? David learned to place God before his battles. Before he would go, he would ask God. He followed every instruction down to the last detail, and victory was always guaranteed. He didn't get used to one routine and think, because something worked the last time, it would work the same way again. No, for every battle, even battles with the same enemy, David would go and ask God again, receive instructions, and go get the victory. In truth, it wasn't David fighting and winning those battles. It was God fighting on his behalf. Dear friend, you have to stop thinking that you can do it. Many of us still think we can. When we keep trying to get different results by doing the same thing, we may think we're persevering, but the truth is that we're wasting our time. Life's battles don't work that way. It's helpful in our battles to remember God's track record. He has proven himself in each of our lives. You need to remember what he did in your life because that's the life you're living. And while you can learn from the stories of others, it's important to look back and see his faithfulness to you personally. What about those situations and moments that feel like you can't see God's faithfulness in your life? Yes, I know that you can come to a point in your life where it may seem like you can't really find anything God's done for you, even though there are things. This is not your actual doing. It's the devil. He's attacking your trust. You see, when Satan knows that you want to choose to trust God and start walking in faith, he will begin to whisper lies in your ears. One of those lies, he whispers, is that God can do a lot, but he can't do all things. And maybe meeting your need is just one of the things God can't do. But the devil is a liar. There's nothing God can't do. He cannot lie. And if he says something, he will definitely do it. If he makes you a promise, then he will surely keep it. Isaiah 14, 24. The Lord Almighty has sworn, surely as I have planned, so it will be, and as I have purposed, so it will happen. If God said all things, then that's exactly what he meant. If we choose to believe that God will give us the victory, we will see just how powerful he is. But when instead we choose to trust in our own strength and intelligence, we'll quickly see how inadequate we are. This video is coming to encourage you, dear believer, we need to truly believe what John 15, 5 says. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. These are the words of Jesus. Apart from him, we can do nothing. Child of God, your heavenly Father is still in the business of strengthening the weak, fighting for the helpless, and reviving the faint-hearted. He takes wounded souls who are broken, challenged, and weak, and instead of just obliterating them for being so, he camps out there. He strengthens us when we need strengthening the most, becoming what we lack. And he does it for a couple of reasons, the greatest being because he loves us with an everlasting love. God loves you, my friend. You can look in the mirror right now and see that person before you, standing there with all your burdens, shame, and limitations, doubting yourself. However, your Heavenly Father did not only create that person, fashioning each and every detail and counting each hair on your head. He also genuinely loves the person reflected before you. Take heart and entrust that fight in your life into His hands. He is God. He will get the glory. He is the only one who deserves the glory. The more obvious it is that you don't have what it takes to be victorious, the more you can trust that He will step in. 
He's the God of the final hour, the last curtain, and impossibilities. He loves it when we stand with gaping mouths, recognizing what He did. So, why not give Him every opportunity to show us? The Bible tells us in Psalm 63, 7, For you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I will sing for joy. How incredible would it be to wake up every morning and sing for joy because you're living in God's purpose? Now, you might wonder how you can reach that point where your life resonates with joy and fulfillment. Let's embark on this journey of discovery together. Understand this, you are always within God's purpose. Every step you take, every moment you live, it's all under His divine plan. Nothing in your life happens by accident. God ordains it all. This truth alone should fill you with a sense of purpose. Your every breath is a part of His grand design. But we know that sometimes it doesn't feel that way. It can be disheartening to see others thriving while you feel stuck and purposeless. It's important to remember that God's timing is perfect and your unique journey is part of His greater plan. Just as Joseph's life in the Bible had its shares of ups and downs, from being sold into slavery to becoming a ruler in Egypt, your life's journey has purpose in every twist and turn. Now, to find your purpose, start by seeking God in everything you do. Pray earnestly, asking for guidance and clarity. When you open your heart to Him, you'll find that He speaks to you through subtle nudges, inner convictions, and even the wise counsel of others. It's also crucial to discover your unique gifts and passions. What makes your heart come alive? What talents has God blessed you with? When you align your passions with His purpose, incredible things happen. Just as David used his talent of playing the harp to serve King Saul, you too can use your gifts and passions to serve God's greater plan. Remember, finding your purpose is a journey it's not a destination. Embrace the process and don't be discouraged by setbacks. They are part of the refining process that prepares you for your calling. Just as a blacksmith must heat and shape metal to make a masterpiece, God uses life's challenges to mold you into the person He intended you to be. So wake up each day with the confidence that God has indeed chosen you for a reason. Your purpose is here waiting to be unveiled. Live your life with joy, faith, and an unwavering belief that God's plan for you is extraordinary. And always remember Romans 8.28. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Proverbs 69 reminds us, in their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. It's a powerful reminder that God is a purpose for each of us and He's actively guiding our steps. Now let's dive into something we've all encountered at some point in our lives, feeling lost and purposeless. Imagine you're out hiking in the wilderness and you lose your way. You're surrounded by towering trees. In the path ahead, it seems uncertain. That's how it can feel when you're not aligned with God's purpose. But here's the thing. Just like a compass points north, God's words guides us towards our purpose. When we choose to walk in His ways, we find direction and meaning. It's as if God hands us a map for our life journey, and we can trust His guidance every step of the way. Now, you remember that feeling of being lost in the woods? Well, living in sin is like taking a detour deeper into the wilderness. You know you're headed in the wrong direction, and it only leads to more confusion and despair. Psalm 32, 8 says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. God is always ready to guide us back to the right path. But let's not stop there. God's purpose for your life isn't just about avoiding sin, it's also about embracing His unique plan for you. Just like a puzzle piece fits perfectly into a larger picture, you have a role in God's grand design. Consider the story of Joseph in the Bible. Despite facing adversity, betrayal, and imprisonment, Joseph never lost sight of his purpose. In the end, he 
played a crucial role in saving his family and the entire nation of Egypt. Joseph's story teaches us that even in the darkest of times, God's purpose can shine through. Now let's bring this closer to home. Think about your talents and passions. What makes your heart race with excitement? What brings you joy and fulfillment? These are often clues to your God-given purpose. Maybe you're an artist and your creations inspire others. Perhaps you have a gift for teaching and you can impact lives through education. Or it could mean that your empathy and kindness are meant to bring comfort to those in need. Your unique talents and passions are part of God's plan for you. So don't be afraid to explore, learn, and grow. Trust in God's guidance. And remember that even when you stumble or take detours, He is always there to lead you back to your purpose. As Jeremiah 29 11 tells us, For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Every sunrise should bring with it a sense of anticipation, a whisper of purpose and a heart brimming with joy. If you find yourself waking up every day engulfed by apathy or dread, it's time to take a closer look at your life. You see, God has chosen you for a reason, and it's in that purpose that you'll find the true essence of your existence. In the book of Galatians, it reminds us that one of the fruits of the Spirit is joy. Galatians 5.22 Joy should be a constant undercurrent in your life, not an occasional guest. Sure, life will throw its challenges at you, requiring patience and persistence, but overall, you should be filled with a sense of exhilaration that permeates your days, your work, and your relationships. When you're doing what you were created to do, when you're aligning your God-given purpose, joy naturally follows. It's not an optional extra, as John Piper eloquently puts in his book, Desiring God. It's an essential part of the journey, one that becomes even more apparent after you've found faith. Fulfillment, my friend, is the key to a life well lived. It emerges from engaging in activities that resonate with your heart and soul. It blossoms from pursuing meaningful, purposeful endeavors, whether it's your job, your relationships, your hobbies. They should light a fire within you, not leave you in a state of perpetual grayness. Consider your job, for instance. It should be more than a means to an end. It should tap into your skills and passions. Your relationships should be a harmonious exchange of giving and receiving, not one-sided and draining. Even your hobbies should be invigorating, breathing life into your soul rather than numbing your mind. Now don't get me wrong, life won't always be an endless parade of excitement. You'll have to trudge through some mundane and monotonous tasks. However, if the entirety of your life feels like an uninspiring shade of gray, it's a sign that you may need a change. Remember. God has chosen you for a reason, and that reason is wrapped in a blanket of purpose and joy. Seek it out with determination, for when you do, you will not only find your path illuminated, but your heart ignited. You are meant for more, and it's time to step into the fullness of your divine destiny. Feeling trapped in a life that desperately craves challenge is a telltale sign that you might not be walking in alignment with God's purpose. It's that feeling of yearning for something different, yet feeling utterly stuck. Like a ship anchored in a sea of frustration, can you relate to that sense of being lost? Without a clear understanding of God's purpose for your life, you might find yourself wandering aimlessly, drifting from one thing to another without a sense of progress or fulfillment. Unlike the Israelites, who journeyed through the wilderness for 40 years with the Promised Land as their destination, you may not even have a specific goal to strive for. But here's the good news. God has chosen you for a reason. He has a unique purpose tailored just for you. Your life is not meant to be a series of repetitive tasks and unfulfilled desires. It's a divine journey filled with purpose, meaning, and the potential to make a significant impact. The Lord of the Rings, J.R.R. Tolkien, penned the immortal words, not all who wander are lost, and my friends, let me tell you, the same truth applies to each and every one of you. It might feel like you're drifting aimlessly, without a clear purpose, but I assure you, you are not lost. God has chosen you for a reason, and today, you're going to embark on a journey to help you find your purpose in life. First and foremost, 
we must acknowledge the power of prayer. When you find yourself adrift, uncertain of your path, turn to God in prayer, as James 1.5 reminds us. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. Isn't that amazing? God is waiting to impart his divine wisdom on you to lead you into a purposeful and fulfilling life. So go ahead, ask God for purpose and do so with unwavering faith, for he longs to bless you with a life full of joy and ambition. Now, you may be wondering, how does God communicate his purpose to us? Well, the primary means through which God speaks to us is his word. It may not contain a list of career choices or hobbies, but it holds a key to understanding the heart of God as Psalm 119.105 beautifully declares, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. In these sacred scriptures, you'll find the wisdom to navigate life's twists and turns, and it's the first step towards discovering your God-given purpose. Imagine the Bible as a treasure map, guiding you to the greatest treasure of all, your purpose. It's not just a book, it's a divine revelation a roadmap to living a life that aligns with God's plan for you. So here's what you do. Start digging into scripture, my friends. Dive deep into its pages. Soak in the wisdom and let it illuminate your path. As you immerse yourself in God's word, you'll begin to understand his desires for you, his dreams for your life, and the unique purpose he has crafted just for you. In the book of Hebrews, Paul encourages us to throw off everything that hinders us and the sin that so easily entangles us. It's a call to shed the burdens that weigh us down, much like a runner shedding every ounce of resistance for a smoother, swifter race ahead. Just as a runner knows the importance of a clean slate, we too must choose daily to let go of what's behind, surrendering it all to God. It might feel daunting at first, but this surrender is the pathway to freedom. It's allowing God to take control, to work His miracles in our lives. Picture this. You're navigating through the chaos of life, just like a bustling city street with honking cars and hurried footsteps. But in the midst of it all, there's a gentle whisper. Trust in Him. It's that whisper that offers you peace, even amidst the noise. It's a reminder that God is in control, and He will fix it for you. Now, I want you to close your eyes and take a deep breath. Imagine handing over all your worries and fears to God. Visualize placing them in His capable hands, and with a deep breath say, Fix it, Jesus. Trust in His power and His plan, even when you can't see the way forward. Our God is greater than any problem we face. He specializes in making a way where there seems to be no way. His divine intervention is at work in your life, even when you can't perceive it. Remember, God's timing is perfect, and His ways are beyond our comprehension. As Psalm 139 verses 1 through 4 reminds us, O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. In the same way, God is intimately aware of the shattered pieces of our heart, the dreams that seem to have crumbled and the challenges that weigh you down. He knows every tear you've shed, every fear that keeps you awake at night. It may seem like your world is falling apart, but remember, Nothing is too hard for the Lord. God will take you from brokenness to wholeness. Life can sometimes shatter us, leaving us feeling lost and broken. But in those moments of deep hurt and despair, God's love shines the brightest. Think about a mosaic, a beautiful work of art created from broken pieces of glass or ceramic. Each shard, once fragmented and discarded, finds its place in a masterpiece that tells a unique story. Your life is like that mosaic. Every trial, every setback, every moment of brokenness is a piece that God uses to create something beautiful. Psalm 34 verse 18 says, 
The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and save such as have a contrite heart. John 4 also tells us about the woman at the well. She was shunned by others because of her past, but Jesus approached her offering living water and a chance for a fresh start. Just as he did with her, Jesus takes our broken pieces and puts them back together, making us whole and renewed. Every scar, every tear becomes a testament to his healing power and boundless love. Trust him to do what he does best, transforming your brokenness into a testimony of his grace. God has a plan, even when we can't see it. Imagine you're putting together a jigsaw puzzle and there's a piece missing. You might feel frustrated and wonder how the picture can ever be completed. In life, it often feels like there are missing pieces, unanswered prayers, unfulfilled dreams, and unexpected challenges. But God sees the full picture. He knows how each piece fits together, even when it seems impossible to us. Proverbs 3 verses 5 through 6 reminds us to trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make straight your paths. When it seems like everything is falling apart, trust that God is working behind the scenes to bring everything together. He's the master puzzle solver, and He never leaves a piece out of place. Ecclesiastes 3 verses 1 through 3 says, For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up. So, when you feel like God is taking His time to work it out, remember that His timing is to protect you, guide you, and ensure that everything falls into place beautifully. God will provide in unexpected ways. Imagine you're in a desert, parched and thirsty, and suddenly you discover an oasis, a source of water in the most unlikely place. God often provides for us in ways we could never have anticipated. When we're facing challenges and uncertainties, we might think we know the solution, but God's provision can come from unexpected sources and in unexpected forms. Philippians 4 verse 19 reminds us, And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. So, when you're in the desert of your struggles, keep your eyes open, because God has a way of surprising you with his abundant provision. Trust that he will work it out in ways you never thought possible. God takes our trials and challenges and uses them to bring about a transformation in our lives that displays His glory. Your situation might seem like a cocoon, confining and uncomfortable, but God is preparing to reveal something breathtaking. Isaiah 43 verse 19 says, Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Your current circumstances are not the end of your story. They are a chapter in the grand narrative that God is writing for your life. Trust that He will use your situation to showcase His power and love. God is always with you. Picture a lighthouse standing tall and shining its light through the darkest of storms. No matter how tumultuous the sea of life may become, God is your constant lighthouse. He never abandons you even when you feel lost in the midst of the storm. When you feel overwhelmed and the waves of life threaten to engulf you, know that God's presence is your anchor. He will guide you safely through the roughest waters. Think about a parent's love for their child, a love that remains steadfast even in the face of disobedience and mistakes. God's love for you is beyond measure, and it doesn't change based on your circumstances or mistakes. His love is constant, unwavering, and unconditional. Romans 8 verses 38 through 39 declare, For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. No matter what you're going through, Rest assured that God's love is always there to embrace you, comfort you, and carry you through the toughest of times. 
Let me share a story that beautifully illustrates this divine peace. In the book of Daniel, chapter 6, we find Daniel, a man of unwavering faith, thrown into a den of hungry lions. Now, if you or I were in that situation, fear would likely consume us, but not Daniel. He remained calm, placing his trust in the Lord. In a miraculous turn of events, God closed the mouths of those fierce lions, keeping Daniel unharmed. In moments of chaos, when we turn to Jesus for help, He fills our hearts with that same peace, making us feel safe even when the world around us is in turmoil. God, our divine architect, has a grand design for each of our lives. Just as an architect meticulously plans every detail of a building before a single brick is laid, God has a blueprint for our lives. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 reassures us, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope in a future. So, even when life feels messy and chaotic, we can rest assured that God is at work aligning every event according to his divine purpose. Consider the life of Joseph, a man whose story mirrors the twists and turns of our own lives. He was sold into slavery by his own brothers, falsely accused and unjustly imprisoned. It seemed like his life was a never-ending storm of adversity. However, as we read in Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, God had a master plan. Joseph's journey led him to become the second in command in Egypt, a position that allowed him to save countless lives during a devastating famine. As we embark on this journey together, remember this. Life can often feel like a juggling act. We attempt to balance our dreams, fears, and worries, all while trying to maintain a sense of control. But, my dear friends, the truth is that we are not meant to carry this heavy load on our own. We are not designed to be the sole architects of our destiny. When we let go and let God, we are essentially saying, I surrender. We're admitting that we're not superheroes capable of handling every challenge that comes our way. Instead, we're entrusting our hopes, fears, and aspirations to the one who has a divine plan for each of us. In the book of Psalms, it's beautifully written, Powerful is your arm, strong is your hand, your right hand is lifted high in glorious strength. Psalm 89 verse 13. Isn't that an awe-inspiring image? When we release our grip on life's complexities, God steps in with His boundless strength. Giving it to God isn't a one-time decision. It's a daily commitment. Just as we wake up each morning and brush our teeth, we must choose to surrender our concerns to the Almighty. The enemy, like a relentless storm, seeks to cloud our minds with worries, doubts, and fears. But remember, when we let go and let God, we make room for His presence in our lives. Imagine those negative thoughts as unruly hairs that need trimming. Don't let them invade your space. Instead, offer them to God immediately. His mercies are renewed with each dawn erasing the mistakes of yesterday and clearing space for His goodness, grace, and favor. When you find yourself in a dating dilemma, when your heart feels heavy with uncertainties, remember that God is the ultimate matchmaker. He knows the desires of your heart better than anyone else. So, give Him room to work His wonders in your love life. As you navigate the ups and downs of dating, surrender the desire to control every outcome. Trust that God is orchestrating something beautiful for you. Just as in other areas of life, let go and let God be the author of your love story. So, my dear friends, I encourage you to embrace this mindset every day in every aspect of your life. Watch as God works it out and be amazed by the masterpiece He is creating. Your journey may have twists and turns, but with God, the destination is always glorious Keep your heart open, your spirit willing, and your trust in Him unwavering. Remember, when you watch and let God take the lead, He will indeed fix it for you.